Hello, welcome to OMK's Grade 3 Science. My name is Barbara. Barbara. I am from Canada and I love science. In this course, we will learn many, many interesting things, such as animals, plants, weather, energy, and climate. Let's get started on Chapter 1. Did you ever wonder how tall a tree grows? The record is 112 meters. This is the kind of pine tree found in Oregon and California. What does it need to grow? We will find the answers in this lesson and also discover how living things are all alike. Let's do some vocabulary first. Vocabulary is very important because it teaches us new words. I would like you all to meet my assistant, Frank. Frank is a living thing. He is a chichia pet and grows grass out of the top of his head. All right, the vocabulary for today, lesson one. New words, number one, organism, organism. Number two, reproduction, reproduction. Number three, environment, environment. Number four, respond, respond. Number five, cell, cell. Now we will learn all about these words today in lesson one. <clears throat> that was super fun. Let's look now at the outline on the board. Today we will learn about number one, the features of living things. Number two, the smaller parts of living things. An animal cell versus a plant cell. All right, let's get started. So what are the features of living things? An organism is a living thing. How can you tell an organism from a non-living thing? There are certain ways to tell a living thing from a non-living thing. Number one, Living things grow and change. So they grow and change. A living thing grows. It starts out very, very small. Then it gets bigger. An oak tree begins as an acorn. Then it grows to become a green sapling. Sapling. This is a very young tree. Organisms also change as they grow. The way a living thing changes during its life is called development. Development. As an oak sapling grows, the branches and trunk become thicker and stronger. Let's look here on the poster. Here's a diagram of the oak tree. It starts off as an acorn, a very, very small. Then it goes into a green sapling. Remember sapling, a very, very young tree. And then it goes into a large tree. So let's go over this again. Large tree, acorn, green sapling, young tree, and large tree. And it keeps going throughout this cycle. All right. The second things of all living things is living things must reproduce. This means that they make more of their own kind. Plants grow from seeds, chicks hatch from eggs, and some animals, such as puppies, are born live from their mother. All of these are examples of reproduction. So let's recap. The second characteristics of all living thing is they must reproduce. puppy similar to its parents. Some new living things or offspring are not exact copies of their parents. Instead, they have characteristics of both parents. Most animal offspring, including you, are not exact copies of your parents. Let's take an example. 
Notice that the puppies, they look like their mother, but they are not exactly alike. It is true also for flowers. I've got a little demonstration. If we take a red flower and a yellow flower, and these are the parents, its offspring will be an orange flower. Notice that the orange flower is not exactly like its parents, but it does share similar characteristics. So the red and the yellow flowers make an orange flower. All right, excellent. All organisms live in environment. Environment. An environment is made up of everything that surrounds an organism. It includes air, water, soil, and many other organisms. So the fourth thing that all characteristics have in common is that living things respond. Respond. When environment changes, an organism may respond to that change. To respond is to react. All living things respond to many changes. Both plants and insects respond to light. Plants grow towards light and insects fly toward it. The leaves on some trees respond to change in a season. In autumn, they turn colors and then fall off the branches. Animals also respond to change in a season. Bears eat a lot of food as winter nears. Then they sleep the rest of their life in the winter in a cave. You respond to your environment in many ways too. You may shiver when you are cold. Can you think of any other ways that you may react to your environment? Such as sweating when you're hot. There are many other examples. I would like you to think of some on your own. All right, let's look at the demonstration up here on the board. Here it shows a bear eating many, many berries so that it can survive in the winter when it goes to sleep. And here it is showing a bunch of sunflowers responding to light. Notice that they are all bent in a certain way. This means that the light must be shining right here. Excellent. The fourth thing that all living things have in common is communicating. Communicating. Most living things communicate, which means to share information. To communicate, organisms send, collect, and respond to signals. They communicate in many ways. Fireflies flash lights to attract males. Some birds sing to mark the area where they live. The blackbird will sing a song saying to everyone, this is my territory. The cuttlefish changes color and texture. This alerts other animals that it is looking for food. To receive communications, living things use their senses. The sense of sight, smell, hearing, and touch. Excellent. Let's go to the board now. This is the cuttlefish. It changes color to let other animals know it's looking for food. And this is the picture of the blackbird. This is one that sings when it's wanting to tell other birds, get out of my territory. All right. So let's move on. What are the smaller parts of living things? More than 300 years ago, a scientist, Robert Hooke, looked at a thin piece of cork through a microscope. A microscope. A microscope is a device that uses glass lenses similar to those in eyeglasses. These lenses allow people to see very small things. Hooke saw that cork was made of tiny box-like shaped cells, which he named cells. Cells are the basic building blocks of life. Since Hooke's time, scientists have learned that all living things are made of cells. Your own body is made of billions of cells. Plant and animal cells have many of the same parts, 
both plant and animal cells are filled with cytoplasm. So let's go over here and look now at the cells. This is the microscope, the device that lets you see very, very small things. This is a picture of a plant cell, and this is a picture of an animal cell. So what do they share in common? That is an excellent question. Let's look now at the picture. Both share a nucleus. A nucleus. You see in the animal cell, the nucleus is located here, and in the plant cell, the nucleus is located here. All right, what else do they have in common? That's right, a cellular membrane. A cellular membrane is the outer covering of the cell. Do you see? In the animal cell, the cellular membrane is here. Excellent. So back to talking about the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a clear, jelly-like material located right here in the middle of everything. Cytoplasm, cytoplasm. All right, so the plant cell and the animal cell have three things they share in common. Let's think about this. All right, let's write this down. So they both have a cytoplasm. They both have a cell membrane. And they both have a nucleus, a nucleus. Now in what ways are these cells different? That is a very good question. Now we can take a look at this picture and we can see that it is very different. For example, let's look at the plant cell, the shape of it. Something's different, don't you think? Well, the plant cell is very box shaped like. The animal cell takes on many different forms. It can be circular, it can be oval, it can be square, it can do almost anything. But a plant cell, remember this, is always box shaped. A plant cell also has a cell wall, which animal cells do not. This is a stiff outer layer outside the cellular membrane animals do not have. Remember that, very important. Most plant cells also have something we call chloroplasts. Chloroplasts. Let's look here now at the picture and find the chloroplasts. Can you find it? I did, right here. Chloroplasts make food. The animal cells do not have chloroplasts. Excellent, let's go put this down here. So the plant cell has what difference does it have? It's very box shaped. Box shaped. It also has a chloroplast. What else does it have? Can you guys remember? That's right, a cell wall. Excellent. So let's review this. An animal cell versus a plant cell. What do they have in common? They have a cytoplasm, they have a cellular membrane, and they have a nucleus. What's different about the animal cell and the plant cell? Well, the plant cell is box shaped, it has a chloroplast, and it has a cell wall. Excellent. So let's review what we've learned today. Number one, the features of living things. Do you remember them? There's four of them. That's right, number one, they must grow and change. Number two, they must reproduce. Do you remember what we saw with the flower, the red flower and the yellow flower making an orange flower? Excellent. Number three, what is the third thing? They must respond to environment. Do you remember the daisies and the sunflowers, how they will turn and bend towards the light? And also the bear hibernating for the winter, eating lots and lots of berries. All right, the fourth thing that all animals must do, they must communicate. Communicate. So they must share information. Do you remember the blackbird that we talked about, singing, 
marking its territory. We all communicate too. Sometimes humans, we use cell phones or internet, but we all communicate in different ways. All right, the second thing we did today was the smaller parts of living things. Do you remember this very small cell that Robert Hooke first saw through a device called the microscope? The microscope. All right, and then we did the difference between the animal and the plant cell. So why is all of this stuff very important? Well, why it matters. Living things grow and change and reproduce and respond to their environment. It is important to be able to identify living things. Only living things are made of cells. Each cell in your body is a living thing. But a cell cannot live by itself. Each of your cells must live as a part of a larger thing, which is you. Excellent. Okay, let's do some questions now. Think and write. So let's think about this. Number one it says, what is an organism? So what is an organism? I'll give you a moment to think about that. All right, I know the answer. An organism is a living thing. Okay, number two. How is a living thing different from a non-living thing? Do you think about that? This is a very hard one. No, it's easy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, so what classifies a living thing? Remember, they must grow and change. They must reproduce, they must respond, and they must communicate. Excellent. Let's go on to number three. What features do all animal and plant cells have in common? This is an easy one. Do you remember? We have the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, and the nucleus. The three things that animal and plant cells have in common. Excellent. Let's, let's think about a little experiment. How would you test the way a plant may respond to change in its environment? I'll give you a moment to think about this. Okay, this one's really fun. You can do this at home. You can take a plant in your home and put it in a very dark room with one window. If you leave this plant for a few days, don't forget to add water the plant will eventually bend towards the window because that is where the sunlight is coming through. This is very important concept to understand, but you can do this at home and it's very easy. All right. Well, I've had an excellent time here today, but I have one more special treat for you. It's called Joke of the Daytime. I have another assistant. This is Fred. Frank's brother. All right, let's do joke of the day. This is supposed to be fun for you. All right, let's read this together. What do you say to a cow that goes in front of your car? Let's read that one more time. What do you say to a cow that goes in front of your car? Can you think? This is going to be funny. <gasps> Move over. Ha, ha, ha. Move over. Ha, ha. Do you get it? Very funny. All right. Say goodbye to Fred. Bye-bye. All right. That was so funny. Well, until next time, see you later.